Hi, this is your Sapna Bharti and we are here at KubeCon in Chicago and we have with us once again Martin Fan, field CTO of Cloudcast of Ecologic. Martin, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, it's, it's my pleasure to host you again. We are here at KubeCon again. Uh, last time we were at the previous KubeCon. Talk a bit about once again from Cloud Casa's perspective, how has been this event so far? This KubeCon has actually been great, actually. Um, we've met a lot of interesting customers, a lot of more customers looking to do backups and migrations of their uh, uh, Kubernetes clusters. So it's uh, been a great event for us. And because when we do look at you know Kubernetes or any other technologies, you know, data is the most important thing. Uh, it might not be the sexiest, the shiniest, but data backup, you know, all this, you know, disaster recovery, that is critical, you know, for business sustainability, business survival. Uh, so talk a bit about from Kubernetes perspective, what does data backup mean? What are you seeing? We've been a backup and data protection company for over or the past 30 years now, right? So uh, we've known a lot about data protection. We knew how Kubernetes changed the landscape of data protection. But I think it's more than just data protection now at this point. Uh, a lot of use cases that we're encountering on the show floor is due to migration, due to debugging and, and test devs. So having a snapshot copy or being able to take a snapshot copy of your clusters and being able to spin them up anywhere and migrate them to any managed cloud service provider is going to improve that flexibility of the Kubernetes use case. And, and that's really where we're starting to see the uh, data protection use case of the Cloud Casa platform evolve more towards a, a migration perspective and a uh, debugging perspective. When it comes to data, what are some of the pain points? It, it could, as you said, data migration, you know, ingress, ingress can be a big challenge. What are the pain points that you see that, you know, folks are facing here when they come to the booth and you learn that? A lot of the pain points are just the details and the intricacies of uh, restoring or migrating an application, right? What needs to happen in terms of remapping storage classes, renaming namespaces, ensuring that you're capturing all the persistent volume data, how you're quiescing databases. So these are all the details that we're hoping Cloud Casa as a platform that users can use, not just for data protection, but also for this migration purpose can help ease and facilitate, right? And as you're Kubernetes user base and customer base becomes larger, more people are using the applications, more people are looking to uh, protect those applications and ensure their uh, restorability, that's when you're going to start seeing more users have requirements for role-based access control organizations, and that's really what Cloud Cost is going to uh, hopefully bring together as a single pane of glass for the, these types of users. What is Cloud Casa doing to solve some of these problems? Did you folks made any announcement here? Our latest enhancement is um, with regards to having self-hosted. We've been trying to uh, follow the market from a perspective of what customers are actually using in terms of a data protection product. And looking at the landscape, we saw uh, Valero, right? The open source uh, backup uh, program for Kubernetes, right? Uh, open source backup for, for Kubernetes here. And uh, with regards to Valero, we realized that Valero had 99%, let's say, the market share. Like, and rather than reinvent the wheel here, uh, we decided to piggyback off of those uh, Valero customer environments and build that into our own cloud cost of portal, right? So uh, from a, uh, I guess, an application integration perspective, Valero has been uh, still kind of our focus, um, but uh, carrying forward that message uh, from a improvement uh, or a Cloud Casa uh, platform improvement perspective, uh, we discovered that as more Valero customers were coming to and, and using our Cloud Casa platform, we, they were requiring more options from a self-hosted perspective, right? Hey, I have secure environments here that I can't necessarily uh, target a, 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 or use a, a software as a service platform, and that's why we had uh, just announced self-hosted as being an option for our Cloud Casa platform. Talk a bit about the, the need for self-hosted in the context of the whole data sovereignty and what kind of audience, industry, market you are targeting with this announcement. So self-hosted is just the option for users that may not have the ability to connect or to our software as a service, uh, provide them with the option of 
hosting cloud costs uh, in their own environment. So we're talking uh, government sites, uh, government clouds, people that really don't want to have uh, their uh, a any network traffic uh, flow out of their internal Kubernetes networks, right? So, and I, I think you can have a, a wide range of, of use cases um, from, let's say, uh, cloud partners that are looking to host some type of data protection on their own managed services, uh, cl cloud managed services. They are able to take advantage of our self-hosted options, have our cloud cost of server deployed from their marketplace and, and provide their customers with uh, data protection options for the, their cloud managed services. So I think that it can uh, have a wide range of opportunities and um, be able to fit into a lot of needs from a customer or a vendor perspective. Is there any specific target audience? It could be you know, public sector and in private sector, some specific industries? All the above, right? So, I mean, we hear, I mean, most of the time you're going to find the, this requirement from the, the, the the federal public sector, um, just users that are looking for that additional level of security or uh, not wanting to have traffic flow out of the environment. And, you know, we had those data sovereignty options within our product initially, right? From being able to bring your own storage, uh, being able to take advantage of, let's say, private links for data traffic, but there's always that requirement of you know, having to communicate back to the cloud CASA server, right? The, all the control messages having to go back to our cloud CASA server. And because of the way cloud CASA has been designed, it was built in Kubernetes for Kubernetes. We realized that we could, you know, with a few minor tweaks, we could package it up. We can uh, basically say, hey, you, we're going to provide you with a Helm chart to deploy our cloud CASA server, and you just need to connect to our Docker Hub repository, download our application, deploy it within your own cluster, and away you go. And, and now you have all the benefits and, and features of Cloud Casa. So I think, it, you know, we, if you look at it from a public private sector, we're just looking at users that you have or want that, uh, want or, or need that on prem requirement. And, th and that's the whole reason behind the self hosted option there. Let's also talk about the importance of partners, you know, service providers, you know. Um, how does this offering or cloud was help them or does it mean anything for them as well? Oh, definitely. So with the self-hosted option now, we have the option uh, to allow our partners to possibly OEM our product, uh, deploy within their clouds. Uh, we also have provided uh, other uh, partnership opportunities in terms of uh, destination storage to back up to, right? Another recent announcement uh, from uh, this uh, KubeCon event is our ability to support Azure Container Storage uh, from Microsoft. So that is the abstraction layer behind, uh, in, in front of Azure Disk, but our software works with that. So now it just extends the use cases that, uh, or migration use cases that a customer might have from, let's say, being able to deploy in an Amazon Cloud one day and then be able to migrate to, and back up from uh, an Azure Cloud the next day. I mean, we have been talking about Bellero, uh, the kind of adoption. You touched upon that briefly in the beginning also. Just, just also, you know, since we are back in KubeCon, uh, what kind of, you know, adoption you're seeing there? What kind of community response? What kind of response from the ecosystem? So I think the last time that we had talked at KubeCon was back in Detroit. And at that point, when I checked, it, it was about 50 million uh, plus pools from Docker Hub. The, uh, the layer application. And since that time, I think after three or f six months or so, after that initial interview event, it had gone from 50 million to 100 million plus pools. So, uh, I mean, the adoption for Valera has been going like gangbusters. We realized that we didn't want to uh, reinvent the wheel or, or fight against that current. Uh, the best way in order to get adoption and users looking at our platform was to uh, provide an option that actually use the power of Valera, but include, incorporate some of the functionality offered by CloudCasa, the full stack recovery, the, the, the multi-cluster manager, the UI, the reporting. So all that capability of CloudCasa Pro built in and, and carried over into CloudCasa for Valera, I think has been very popular amongst the, the Valera community, such to the point that you know, our developers are, are uh, leaders in the uh, Valera communities and uh, they uh, contribute to the 
enhancements that are going into Valero and, and some of the uh, upgrades and updates from that perspective. So. I also want to talk about some new use cases that are emerging. Generative AI is uh, one of them. Um, how do you look at it? Uh, and we can look at it from two different lenses. One would be Cloud Casa data, data backup recovery for generative AI or generative AI helping Cloud Casa? I, I, I don't think we, we play in like one specific area, right? Um, it, it, I mean, what we're looking at in terms of data protection is just from an overall generic data protection use case. So I think we're, we're uh, primarily in the area of just like the, that lowest common denominator, right? Kubernetes, uh, cloud native, general cloud native applications, databases, you know, typical things that would cause a user or, or incentivize the user to start containerizing their applications, right? And once we start moving from that, that monolithic legacy uh, style application uh, into more of a containerized platform and, and stateful data, that is where our application is going to come into play and be most effective. The last question before we wrap this up is that, of course, there are a lot of things that you folks are already working on internally. You may or not may be able to talk about, but just give us a teaser, a glimpse of what to expect next from Cloud Casa. So I think we're just continuing to follow in the marketplace uh, from a perspective of how users are going to uh, continue to protect their data um, and what their requirements will be for protecting their data. I think what you're going to see from, uh, I guess, a Cloud Casa perspective is um, more features and, and options from a, a data protection use case and, and perhaps a, more of a data reuse case, but also uh, a, a larger outreach for other cloud service providers and vendors. So I, if I had a crystal ball, and I'm not actually part of this committee, but um, if I had a crystal ball, I, I could see us branching out into more uh, cloud vendors and, and uh, cloud object storage and being able to provide a wide range of options to allow users to, regardless of where they're hosting their clusters, either on-prem or off-prem, be able to take advantage of Cloud Casa for their data protection use cases. Martin, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course talk about you know uh, the, all, all the progress that you folks have made with Valero. Of course, that option is growing. And also give us some insight into where market is heading. Thanks for all those insights and I would love to chat with you again. Thank you.